What's cooking, you Ventus fans? Welcome back to your old lady's favorite YouTube channel. And today is finally the day Juventus Giantoli come to the forefront. He has announced it is all official. Obviously, we've known this for some time now. But not only that, but we can move forward into the future and make some Mercado moves. Make some moves that are going to determine the future of Juventus. Some of them may piss you off. Stick with us. We'll fill you in. Ciao ragazzi, welcome back to the Beyond Gadari Zone. My name is Justin Sofro. Today, it is Friday. Thank God it's Friday. It is Friday, July 7th, 2023. And of course, I got your latest rundown of all things Juventus, all the news you care about each and every single day. Before we do anything though, do me a solid favor, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos if you haven't done that already. And if you could, if you haven't done it already, I'm gonna keep asking you, like I said, one more again, if you could pop on over to the How Now We Can Talk Like Men podcast channel, giving away a t-shirt. Every hundred subscribers that we get, we're giving away a t-shirt. So if you could, it's, a, it's right now it's your easiest possibility to get a t-shirt is to pop over there hit the subscribe button and we'll be giving that away here shortly all right if you haven't already done that I'll do that now okay let's get into it let's actually talk the news let's first of all open it up talking about our man Juntoli, who i didn't realize was a juventino or guess everybody's a juventino when they come into juventus and they become uh when they, when they get employed by juventus at some point there's a story about them being juventus fans something that i didn't realize um i guess it's true that's it's the great news that it's true now it makes sense why they were pushing so hard to get a guy who was successful and did a great job at napoli I, it's it's a dumpster fire of a, of a, of a city and of, <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a program they the Scudetto, but at the same time, good on him. Good on him. So if he can do that there, hopefully he can do this so much more with what Juventus has to offer. Let's go ahead and talk about what he had to say. He totally said, the feelings are unbelievable, almost indescribable, because for a child who used to make almost an eight-hour bus ride from Prado to see Juve, this is a great satisfaction. Thoughts? To my dad, definitely. A great Juventus fan who instilled Juventusness. In me, uh, just from, I mean, to me, that's just kind of cool. Like, I, I don't know what how you're gonna think. I, maybe it's just me, uh, and I, I'm a dad now, and, I'm a, a, and as a fan of multiple, you know, not multiple teams of Juventus. When I say multiple teams of teams locally, basketball and American football wise, and growing up with these teams with Juventus, with the Italy national team, with the Louisville stuff here locally, seeing my kids like dive into these these teams and actually be passionate about it. I mean, even in difficult times right now, right? Um, unfortunately, uh, when I was younger, both of them were doing better. Now we're in, in difficult stretches right now uh, for Juventus, and I'm hoping to see them bear the fruits of their labor of toiling through this time. Obviously, they're very young, uh, but that's just cool to see a guy who grew up with it, who is a father who instilled it in him. Um, that, that to me, that's just something cool. That's, I don't know, not trying to get too cheesy, but it is cool. All right, let's continue on though and talk about the second part of this. And yes, I know I am the guy who usually crushes Juve and all that. And, and usually this stuff would make me vomit. It's less about like love it up on the guys who are making tons of money and more about loving up on your dad and your, the father son relationship and what sports means to that. The, the, the baseline, the pulse of what makes, Makes sports great. Um, continuing on, he goes on to say, my description of Juventus, fascinating and ambitious. Uh, we have to work harder than others. Whether we do it better will be time. Uh, will, uh, time will tell. Uh, certainly, I'm a hard worker. We need to put together many heads and one heart. Obviously, doing a little bit of the rah-rah stuff. Teams got to get together. We got to make sure we do the right things. Um, you know, I'm wanting to like put the brakes on a little bit of the expectations. He just came in. Um, they're in a difficult situation, not being in Champions League if you were here a year earlier or at a different time, also being stuck in handcuff to Max Allegri. Uh, we'll see. That's one of the things I'm, I'm interested to see. We know there's reports out there. Well, not reports. He's, he's meeting with Max Allegri uh, sometime this week uh, and, and getting together with the team as well sometime this week and going player by player through all that. How many guys are, is he going to say? This is it. This is like either make or break time or it's already you, you're, it's broken. You got to go. It's time to get out of here. Time to focus on the future. Time to focus on new guys who will help us in the future. Um, let's move away from that. Let's talk about some guys 
Um, and there's situations when it comes to Juventus and how Gentoli maybe will affect it. We'll see. Let's talk about Paul Pogba and his situation. I'm going to throw this up there now. One thing we know is out there, there have been these Saudi Arabian Al-Halal. I mean, I'm tired of hearing the name Al-Halal at this point, but all these Saudi Arabian oil money is trying to come for the top players in Europe. Before, it was always just trying to get them to the teams that they buy, European football, when it comes to PSG and Newcastle, of course, Man City and everything else that goes along with that. Now, they're also trying to get your players and take them out of Europe and take them out of European competition, which to me is kind of a big no-no, but you know, if they got that money, that's what they're going to try to do. And that's why every big time European football player is going to have a Saudi Arabian name attached to them at some point as making an offer. Um, in here, Nico Skinner talks about the situation for Paul Pogba, which he said, Paul Pogba doesn't want to leave Juventus. He's not interested in going to Saudi Arabia. He is working hard to be in good condition at the beginning of the season. He is very motivated to delete the last nightmare season, which is important to me. Because a lot of people have come at me and said, well, you, you, you don't need Malikovic Savage. And I understand that may not be the priority position. I get it. But Malikovic Savage is a top tier player that Juventus has been pining for for years. And if you have an opportunity to get him, you get that shit done. You get it done, son. Um, but going off of Paul Pogba, and also, I'm sorry, Paul Pogba. I hope everything works out. I hope you're going to be healthy. I hope you're good to go. Uh, but I, the past is the past. I've seen what I've witnessed. And, and for all I know is last year is probably what we're going to get more of this season. So how often do you see guys really uh, recuperate and get back to full health and get going? I understand it doesn't always happen. So, so Paul Popa, keep it up. And I understand you're making good money. You're making fantastic money, life changing money right now. So that's one reason you don't want to leave too, even though you can make that same kind of money, I'm sure in Saudi Arabia as well. Anyway, that's enough of Paul Pogba. Well, let's move forward and talk about the other player, the news that we had yesterday when it came to Parisi and we thought he was going to be a Juventus player, but now, now it's like, maybe it's Fiorentina. What is the situation there? Well, Romeo Gressi gives us an update and says that it is true that Juve had contacts with Imboli for Parisi, but without finalizing the deal, they didn't finalize it. The club must first sell. And here we go. Here we go back to the line every year, year in, year out, can't buy players until we sell. I'm sorry. If you have to sell before you can get a player like Padisio, I think it's a fine addition. But that that, that ain't, this isn't bringing in Paul Pogba, bringing in Malikovic Savage, bringing in Vlavic, bringing in these top tier talents. This is Padisi. You, you have to sell to bring in Parisi. We are in dire straits. And I mean, well, I guess we know that. I guess we're aware of the financial situation uh, and everything surrounding um, the environment of this club. But at the same time, it's frustrating. So anyway, uh, Parisi, I guess they got to sell some more to make room for him. And we will talk about some of those players that they could be selling to make room for players moving forward. But not yet, because first we got to talk about one more player that is definitely of interest for Juventus and that we talked about recently the last couple of days, and that is Juventus going back to the well for that of Molina. Um, Gazette del Sport is reporting that new contacts between Juventus and Atletico Madrid have been done for Molina. He is liked the most out of all the options that are out there, but would also be the most expensive option to in difficult to get. Huh. If only this guy would have been cheaper like a year ago could you imagine if this guy was available and affordable like a year ago like like just a year ago just 365 days ago if he were on the market that would have been something smart that Juventus could have gone after anyway <laughs> uh, that, but that's also they're saying why well, contacts continue for that of Castagne and uh, home as well even though, obviously, you know, you've got like Inter sniffing around uh, home, too. Anyway, we move it on and we talk about now the sales, 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 sales that Juve could have happened. Uh, I feel like I'm going to do that money show that was popular in the 2000s. If you're American, you know what I'm talking about. Dude, just like money gunning it and whatever, being crazy. And maybe that's my personality when I talk anyway, but whatever. Uh, we move on to the sports reporting that West Ham has opened up to an 18 million um, option uh, with with three million bonuses in euros. So let me rephrase that. That was terribly said. 18 million euros plus the 3 million euros in bonuses, a 21 total deal for Zakaria. Um, and this is one of those things where it's like, really? So like last year, we're talking about 35. We're talking about the 35 range. And now these are the options that are being floated out there for Zakaria. Uh, obviously, you're going to want to try to sell him and try to move him along. Um, how will Juve come back at this? Are they going to say, are they going to agree to it? Or are they probably going to try to raise that offer a little bit more? Say, give me a little bit more money um, and then we can make a deal happen. I We'll see. Something to keep an eye on, though. But just again, 
more unfortunate circumstances for Juventus. And I think this is going to be another situation where because players, either if they're not in the plans or because players don't want to play at Juventus and don't want to play not in the Champions League, um, they'll go to West Ham. Uh, but, but you know what I mean? At the same time, Juventus's options may be depleted, right? Anyway, let's continue on. And these are the ones that are going to piss you off, right? These are the ones that are going to make you upset. Um, it made me a little bit upset, at least the rumors that are put out there. Um, two young talents that Juventus has, and I don't know if this is a Gentoli thing. I don't know if this is just Juve as a whole. I don't know. I don't know if it's the players that are pushing for it. But rumors of two guys potentially going out. Let's start with the first one. And the first one will be a little bit of a gut punch probably for, for a lot of you. Uh, but La Stampa is reporting and saying that Matias Sule is ready to leave Juventus this summer. With his contract set to expire in 2024, the Bianconeri would like to sell him for 20 to 25 million euros. A high fee despite Feyenoord considering the player. Berardi would be his replacement. Obviously, we've talked about Berardi uh, coming in potentially and the feelings that surround us when it comes to that. Um, but Matias Sule potentially seeing the end of his Juventus career, a player with a ton and ton of potential, a player being used and played out of position. Um, frustrating, D disappointing for me overall to, to see this potential news come out, but it's not surprising given the Max Allegri situation. Um, but something to keep an eye on nonetheless. I want to hear your all's uh, sound off on your opinion on that one in the comment section down below. And then this one, and I'll be honest, this one probably hits me a little bit more just because this player has shown a lot of potential recently at Juventus. And when he got playing time, even under Max Allegri, he had kind of shown pretty pretty nicely. And that is, of course, Samuel Ealing Jr. Corriere Torino is reporting that Ealing Jr. is, is liked especially in the Premier League. Uh, Brighton and Wolverhampton have already shown interest. Juve want to sell, but not sell out. And they're asking 25 million euros for the player. Um, again, this is one that I would just like to see him get more time at Juventus. I think he really showed that he had a lot of potential and did very well uh, when he came in in limited minutes throughout the season. Um, I, I understand making money, and I understand you got to make room for, for other players to come in. As long as you're buying good, talented players to come in, I can understand some sacrifices have to be made. But again, it's like, it, once again, it feels like the young, talented players that have potential or the ones that Juve are shipping off. And uh, this one, this one would bother me. Um, that'll do it though. That's really what we have for the news today. When it comes to Juventus, I'm sure more will pop out throughout the rest of the day, especially now Gentoli gets down, gets to business and gets moving forward. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. If you haven't already smashed that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon to stay notified for all of our latest videos. You can follow me at Justin Sofro on Twitter. And of course you can follow Beyond Canary Zone at Beyond Canary Zone, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Forza Juve. Forza Bianconeri. Say hello to your old lady for me.